Hello and welcome to Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm. I am Jennifer Helm, the Faithful Stamper, and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I have for you tonight a technique that is super easy and centers around a three and a half inch square piece of designer series paper. This is very simple to mass produce and is great for any occasion. And I'm gonna walk you through how to make it. This is inspired by Karen Titus. She is a fellow demonstrator and shared this technique. And it's just a lot of fun and a great way to use up paper if you happen to be like me and have a lot of designer series paper laying around your house. I've been collecting it for years and I'm really trying hard to will, uh, kind of whittle down some of my piles. And um, so I'll show you some samples at the end with lots of different um, ideas for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. To start, we are going to use a card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half, and it is pool party. Um, that's our color here. You don't have to use this style of card base. If you prefer the 11 inch by four and a quarter, that one is fine as well. It doesn't matter one way or the other for this particular um, card technique. My lighting looks a little funny here, but it just must be me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold and check to see which part of the card I want to be the front panel or the back. Sometimes I have just a little bit of overhang on one side, so that becomes the front of the card. Now this next step is optional. So I am taking a piece of cardstock that is five and a quarter by four. I decided to go tone on tone, so it's pool party, just like my base. You can leave this step out if you like and just skip to the next step. But for this card, I decided to cut my panel and then run it through an embossing folder. This is our time-worn type, and it does happen to be retiring in about a week. So you can hop onto my website and check out all the Last Chance products. Starting May 1st, you can see our new products online. If you are like me and you prefer a paper catalog, you are welcome to get in touch with me if you don't have a demonstrator that you're already working with, and I will be happy to send you one. So for this optional step, if you want to do it, just take some adhesive and your either plain or embossed cardstock and go ahead and put it on your card. There are words on here. I'm just gonna make sure I think they're the right way up. And this does not look right. One second. I'm wondering if my cardstock. Yep, it's just a little too long. I must have grabbed a, a scrap. Okay, much better. That wouldn't have fit in the envelope. That would have been fun. Okay. So there we go. There's my optional layer glued to the front of the card base. Now, the next thing you need is another layer of cardstock. This one is smaller. This is three inches by four and a quarter. And this is Lost Lagoon that I'm working with. Now, you have two options. Um, I'm, I'll explain the first and then do the second and then you can decide later on which one you want to do. You can glue this one right now and then continue on with the card, or you can hold off and um, glue it on once we've attached the DSP. I'll show you that technique, um, just, or that step, because it's a little, it's just, well, I'll show you that one. You can figure it out if you wanna glue on the paper. All right, so you need your cardstock layer, and then my, oh, here it is, <laughs> lost a sticky note. My designer series paper is three and a half inch square. So if you're using six by six paper, you only get one out of the sheet. But if you're using 12 by 12, you can get, I think nine, because you can get three from um, just one column of paper that's three and a half inches wide. And so I think that gives you nine for the whole sheet if that's what you're using. So um, just keep in mind your direction as you're cutting. And um, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so I'm going to bring my paper cutter over. There is no fancy cutting required for this. Here are our cutting measurements in case you wanna take notes or take a screenshot. There are four measurements here. We're only gonna make three cuts and these measurements actually tell you the width of the strip. So you're gonna have four strips when you're done, half inch, three quarters, one and one and a quarter. So I'm gonna go line up my paper to the half inch mark and cut. 
move that slide over to three quarters of an inch. Slide over one more time to one inch. And that will leave me with the final strip, which measures one and a quarter. So one, two, three, four. That's all I need to worry about tonight. So if, if you've glued this panel to the card already, you'll just continue with what I'm doing right there on the card front. This, we are going to take our silicone craft mat and then our cardstock layer. And the reason I have my silicone craft mat here is because I'm gonna be using my adhesive and I wanna to get to the end of all these strips and not get glue all over my work table. I'm notorious for that, whether it be glue or tape runner. So I'm gonna go ahead and put adhesive on the back of all four of these panels. And I get as close to the ends as possible You'll see why in a minute. I could use a bigger craft mat, but we only sell them in one size. All right, and then here is the last piece. A little trick that I like to do to make this a little easier on myself is we're gonna be gluing the papers down like this. I'd like to actually rotate my cardstock because I find it easier to line things up and keep it straight this way. Now, you have two options with this part of the card as well. You can do left to right, or I'm gonna show you a little trick that I started with. By the time I finished all my samples, I was pretty good with the spacing. You might be able to tell here my spacing isn't quite even because this was the very first sample I did using this technique. So, I came up with this little idea which helped me a little bit until I was really familiar with the spacing. So I like to start with um, one end or the other. And for this one, I will start with the smallest strip. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a border at the top and then try to center it top to bottom, like so. Now you can go right on down with the next wider, or the, the strip that's next in line, or this is my little trick. Make sure that your pattern paper is going all in the right direction, otherwise your card might look a little funny, especially if it's like a landscape or something. But I go ahead, I'm gonna pick the largest strip, and I'm just kinda gonna eyeball, make sure I'm sorta even, and then pull it right down towards me, leave about the same border, and then press it down. Then I can fill in the gap with the other two strips of paper. Liquid glue might give you a little more freedom. My spacing's still a little off, but that's okay. All right, so it's up to you whether you wanna go all in a row or fill in the middle just like I did. Okay. So here we go. Now I'm gonna glue this to the front of the panel. The reason I like to have adhesive to the ends of the designer series paper, even though um, they overhang, is just to make sure they stick. Because I found if I didn't quite get to the end, I very often caught the end and pulled it up and wrinkled it my very first sample I did that with. And I think one of my cuts was crooked. All right, so there we go. Now you can decorate the card however you like. I decided to take another strip of Lost Lagoon. This is half an inch tall, and I think it's four and three quarters of an inch wide. Just a little bit longer than the four and a quarter that this back piece is. I. I first tried it the same width and I didn't like it at all. I really like having the overhang on either end. I'm gonna grab some mini dimensionals to pop this up. And then I will stamp my sentiment piece. I like to do four on long strips. You wanna make sure if you've got a long strip like this that it's not going to sag in the middle, especially if you're putting it through the mail because we all know they get a little heavily handled sometimes with those machines. 
and you want your lovely card to be as intact as possible when it arrives. All right, so you can center this top to bottom if you're using this strip technique, or um, I put mine a little bit lower than the center. So next, I get my Stampin' Pierce mat out and my Very Vanilla. I could have gone with basic white. There is some white striping here in the paper, but I decided I like the look better with Very Vanilla. So, I'm going to grab Lost Lagoon ink. I managed to lose two pieces of cardstock while I was doing this card. They grew legs and walked off. So, that's okay. Um, actually, what I'm going to do really, really quick is pop over to my paper trimmer and cut the panel I need out of that scrap. That was perfect. I'm going to use this in a minute. And I have just enough here that I can use it. Okay. So, I'm going to stamp in the middle here just to make sure I have enough width for my punch. So, my stamp is thinking of you. I'm gonna grab my hexagon punch. This is one of my favorites. I know I'm gonna use it long after it retires. It is still in the catalog. While I have my ink out, I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to stamp the corner of my envelope with a leaf image. This is from the Inked and Tiled set, which is retiring. It's one of my favorites. I'm very sad to see it go. And it does coordinate with the designer series paper that I'm using tonight. And then here's that very vanilla piece that I cut at the last second. And I'm just gonna add some leaf here to the corners. That's why I need the scrap paper so I don't muck up my mat. Okay, now that goes away. Ink gets closed. Now for the sentiment and my punch, I need it to, again, not be smushed in the mail. So I'm going to take my adhesive and run some right down the middle, but then I'm gonna just take two dimensionals and put them on the top and bottom points of my hexagon. And then it'll stick and then not droop. Now, I could center this or I could move it right to left. I think this time I'm actually gonna put it over here. It kind of covers up a little of my spacing error and um, I think where it was slightly crooked. But experiment, have fun. This is really just meant to be a springboard for you, an idea that you can take and run with as far as you want. That's what I love about these simple ideas. Okay, there's the inside. So there's my card and my envelope. One more thing, let's put a little bling on it. So I have some iridescent rhinestones, basic jewels. And let me see, I think I'm gonna do something different here. Since I put my sentiment off to the side, I think I'm going to take the graduated sizes of my rhinestones and just kind of do that. What do you think? I think I like it. Okay, something a little different. See, you can take the same card and just change it up a little bit and they're both lovely, right? Okay, so I'm gonna show you some samples now and let just point out some differences in the cards so you can see how many options you actually have with the same technique. So first off, I have some similar paper from the same pack, but I changed up the card design. Here I embossed not only the back panel, but the panel behind the DSP, pardon. And I put the strips out of order. Now, if you have a landscape, um, piece of designer series paper, like with a scene, a farm, or something like that, obviously mixing up the pieces is gonna look a little wonky, so don't do that. But if you have an all over print like this, if you wanna go out of order, you can. I just paired up the um, different widths, the smallest and the largest here on this end, and then um, reversed it over here. 
and glue down my DSP. Now I also waited to put this panel on because I added the ribbon. So I glued everything together, added the ribbon and the bow and a different sentiment. And I have a card that's very different, but equally lovely than this first one that I did. See? Okay, one more from that same pack of paper and then we will move on. So this one I went with different colors, obviously. I stepped away from those cool blues. Here I used crushed curry for my base, pulling the yellow out of the paper. And I didn't want it to be completely plain, so I stamped tone in tone with crushed curry ink just around the edges because the rest was all hidden by the DSP and that center point. Then I added my Calypso coral piece underneath and a banner and my sentiment to the front. And then there is the inside. So lots of different options, different shape punch to use, and a banner that I cut in half and then um, affixed to the card behind the sentiment. So next up, I have some new product to show you. If you saw the video last week, you saw some of this DSP before. This is our Adventurous Sky stamp set and the coordinating DSP. Very simple, I let the DSP do the talking. I love the colors. This is uh, Copper Clay and Night of Navy and Misty Moonlight on this card. I added the Happy Birthday, die cut the little banner that's part of the set. And then I added some of our industrial trinkets. These are really fun embellishments. They are reversible, but they have a lower profile if they have this more industrial look, um, as opposed to what I call the pretty side with the etching on it. <laughs> I have ink on my hands from where I was creating samples earlier. But there's the front, very simple, kind of understated, but not boring at all. I love it. Actually, one of these is going in the mail tomorrow. When I looked at this card design, I thought to myself, there's no way I can turn it sideways and change the orientation. I love doing that with the design. And I thought I can't do it. And then I thought a little harder and I went, wait a minute. Yes, I can. All you have to do if you want to make a, um, a vertical orientation on this card is rotate your paper when you cut it. Here you can see I cut vertically up and down. And then here I just rotated the paper so that when I made my cuts, they would come out horizontally on the paper. Just changed out the, the placement of my banner and used smaller embellishments. But the cards are virtually the same. So you can experiment and have some fun with your layout. These were one of my favorites, I think. I'm gonna be using this paper a lot. So here are two more where I experimented with the orientation as well, one style of each. I kept it really, really simple. There's no embossed cardstock here, um, just one die cut, which you could use a punch for if you don't have a die cutting machine. And then here's the vertical version with a little extra. And these are both sympathy cards. Now I mentioned earlier those landscape pieces of paper. So here is one, this is our meandering meadows. I love this paper. I rarely cut it because I love it so much. I just wanna look at the beautiful landscapes that they have created for us. But I really like how this looks when you um, lay it out with this design. It's almost like peeking through a window shade. So I kept it really simple. I used the colors in the paper to pick my colors for the base and layer added a very simple banner and some gems. I kept, um, this was a six by six paper, so I could only get the one three and a half inch square. So I used the leftover paper to create a strip to go inside the card. And then the envelope flap for the card actually is the same piece of paper. And that coordinates beautifully together. Now here I have another card. On this one, I embossed the back panel and the one underneath, added ribbon and a bow, no sentiment needed on the front. I let the paper do the talking and I pulled out a retired set since I don't have the current hot air balloon set so that everything coordinates together. Just a fun birthday card. This paper is actually retiring next week and one thing I love about it is there's balloons on some of the cards, clouds, things like that, but the reverse side has some wonderful prints like this one, which pair beautifully with our Kidding Around stamp set 
and the matching um, DSP, which is where this little guy came from. The paper is retiring, but the kids are sticking around in that new annual catalog, so I'm very excited about that. But just lots of different ways. You can see there's a little, um, little stars there in the back to coordinate with my accents on the inside. A great way to do so many different themed cards with the same layout. Now, if you happen to not have any designer series paper and you're thinking, I don't know what to do, it's okay. You don't need designer series paper. You can use different colors of cardstock and an embossing machine if you have it. If you don't have an embossing machine, just use stamps and stamp tone on tone and that will give you texture as well. This is our new basic beige. It is a new basic color that is joining our line. It is not replacing anything. I embossed that piece. What I did was I cut the three and a half inch square, then I embossed it, and then I cut it. And that way I didn't lose the embossed texture. I also embossed the pecan panel, pecan pie panel underneath. Say that three times fast. Added an early espresso strip with some of our new basic beige ribbon, a little banner, and some of our retiring quirk elements. A very nice manly card, but it's not boring. And there's the inside. So lots of ways you can use this technique with different products you have on hand at home, and it's great for any occasion. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the technique. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. You can click the notification bell and receive a little notification each time I post a new video here on the page. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy crafting.